In this video, we're going to remind ourselves a little bit about how logs work, what they're used for, and why working with the odds ratio, we're going to work on the log scale. First, just a general note that the log can be used to take something that's on a multiplicative scale and move it to an additive scale. For example, suppose that you buy a stock and it doubles in value each year. So I'm going to call this x2. Suppose in year one you buy it for one dollar. After a year, it's up to two dollars. It's doubled in value. Then after another year, it goes up to four dollars. It's doubled in value again. Then a year later, up to eight. A year later, up to 16. A year later, up to 32, and so on, doubling each year. Now on an additive scale, this is growing exponentially or multiplicatively. But on a multiplicative scale, it's growing at a constant value of doubling each year. So let's create that variable x2, right, which shows a doubling each year. And I'm going to plot that versus year one, year two, all the way up to year eight. And looking at this plot, we can see this exponential or multiplicative growth. Now let's take a look at the variable x2 if we put it on a log scale. So I'm taking the log of x2 here. Now we can see each value, it jumps up by the same amount. It goes from zero up to 0.69 from 0.69 up to 1.38. So each time it's increasing by the same amount. And that might be easier to see if we round these values. So I'm gonna take the log of x2 and round it to one decimal place. And we can see it's going from zero up to 0.7, 1.4, 2.1, 2.8, and so on, increasing by the same amount each year. And if we take a look at a plot of the log of x2, let's do that here. We can see now for each year, the increase is the same amount. Okay, so this is a linear growth on a log scale. Now to see a real life example of this, let's take a look at Amazon's stock growth chart. So here I've loaded the stock value for the company Amazon, what their stock trades at for the history of the stock. So starting about 1998. And if we look at this, we can see from 1998 up to 2010, it looks like there's almost no growth in the company. And then around 2016 or so, it really starts to take off and shoot up. Okay, but part of this is because the growth is on a multiplicative scale. When the stock went from $1 up to two, from two to four, four to eight, and so on, that appears to be almost no increase. When we look at the higher end of the scale, when the stock goes from $200 to 400, 400 to 800, eight to 1600, and so on. So now let's take a look at this same plot, but I'm gonna have it right here, plot the value on the log scale. So let's take a look at that. Now we can see on the log scale, it looks like the growth in the company is actually fairly constant almost the same year to year, other than around that 2000 where there was the tech bubble where tech stocks shot up high in value and then crashed down. But aside from that blip there, it looks like from almost 2007, it's pretty much a constant growth, the same increase in the stock each year, even though when we look at it on the linear scale, it doesn't, right? And again, this is because stocks grow multiplicatively. Now I wanna take a look at one more example of the same idea. And here we wanna look at, again, why we're gonna work with the odds ratio on the log scale. So here I've created some odds ratios, and what I want to show you is the odds ratio of 10 and the odds ratio of 1 tenth. In some ways we can think of as being similar. If the exposed have 10 times the odds of disease than the unexposed, the unexposed have 1 tenth of the odds of disease than the exposed. 10 over 1 and 1 over 10 are just flipping what's on the top and the bottom. Same with the odds ratio of 5 and 1 fifth. If the exposed have 5 times the odds of the unexposed, the unexposed have 1 fifth of the odds of the exposed. So let's just fill in those odds ratios there. And remember one being the null value, right? One meaning the odds of, ex of disease for the exposed and the unexposed are the same, or the numerator and the denominator in the odds ratio are the same. So there's those odds ratios. Now let's take a look at them on the log scale. Right, we can see that odds ratio of 10 on the log scale comes to be positive 2.302, and the odds ratio of 1 tenth on the log scale becomes negative 2.302. Or it might be helpful, I'm gonna take those same odds ratios, but put them side by side so we can see it a bit better. So here I'm just gonna put them in a matrix. Let's just make that here. And here's the odds ratios. And put the odds ratio of 10 and 0.1, or 1 tenth beside each other. The odds ratio of five and 1 fifth, right, or 0.2 beside each other. Now, let's take a look at the log of those. And again, we can see on the log scale, at the odds ratio of say five and 1 fifth are the same distance from the null value of zero. Well, the null value for the odds ratio is one. On the log scale, the log of one becomes zero. Okay, so this is gonna help us take something that's measured on a multiplicative scale, like an odds ratio. Right? We're taking a ratio of odds for exposed to unexposed. 
we're measuring the odds of disease on a relative scale or a multiplicative scale and by working on the log scale we can move it to an additive scale. For very similar to what we've seen with these plots here, we're going to take something that when we plot it, odds ratios, you're on this multiplicative or curved scale. By working with the log of the odds ratio, we're going to get ourselves onto this linear scale and we're going to be able to fit lines or linear models just like we were doing with linear regression. And we're going to work with logistic regression, which is a generalized linear model. So this was just a reminder of how the log works and how we're going to make use of that when dealing with odds ratios and fitting logistic regression models.